Hi, I'm Paul Asbell, and I am right now playing Tom Rebecki's uh, Chinnery Archtop. And uh, I have to say first, before I start, that Tom is, of all of the builders who I know, I know a number of them, of all of these Chinnery guitars, Tom is the one I've known the longest. And we are very close friends and um, speak often and uh, wish we spoke even more often. He's a marvelous guy and uh, I consider him a dear friend. And this guitar is really quite fun to play, as um, many of them are, and it's got some interesting stories behind it, which I'll try to render. One of them, pretty obviously, is this is a blue guitar collection. The back kind of is blue, the front, not really so much. Here's the story as I understand it. Um, he began, you know, all of the builders were given the st or specified the stain that um, Scott Chinnery wanted them to use. And Tom had the idea that that stain was a bit less rich than he wished it was. So he decided to basically source uh, a richer version of that, um, of that stain. What he didn't realize is that the pigment that um, he had sourced in order to do it had apparently been on some um, uh, shelf for 15 years before Tom got it. So at the fairly last minute, because of course the stain and the finishing is the last thing in the guitar, at the very last minute, it turned out to be this, not blue. Tom was mortified, showed up at Washington, D.C., and um, apologized apparently to Scott, and Scott Chinnery said, no, I love it, let's keep it. So at any rate, uh, Tom didn't have to refin it, which I'm sure he was pleased by. I think it's actually rather a cool color. It's, I don't know if you can really see, but it's somewhere, it's got a multiple shades, you know, over time, but there's sort of purples, there's obviously, it's kind of a brown tinge. You really have to look carefully to see even a whisper of blue on the top. Although you can see some of it underneath where the sun presumably hasn't really hit uh, underneath the bridge. And of course, on the sides, it's kind of blue. And on the back, it's more so because presumably it's just seen much less sun there. Uh, over the, over a, other places of it, it really becomes purple in at least this light. I don't know if you can really quite get it. but um, and, and here, it really is quite purple. All of this stuff, again, total serendipity on the part of uh, uh, fate and, and Tom Rebecca. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, let's see, it's got um, Tom's typical um, signature triangle there that um, he waxes all metaphysical about. And uh, the, uh, the headstock looks very, very familiar to me because I actually own several of Tom's guitars and use them regularly. And this basically is his standard headstock as I see it in pretty much every way. Um, it's got very, very nice wood bindings, not the kind of uh, more or less plastic binding that um, is kind of standard for arch tops. This is, it looks like koa and or flamed koa and it's really amazing looking, I would say kind of against the purplish uh, brown of, the, the, of what has happened to the finish. There's a really interesting binding around the uh, pick guard. And otherwise, it's, you know, the fairly standard Jimmy DeQuisto-inspired uh, um, wood um, appointments. The bridge is pretty much, or the tailpiece is pretty much all wood, has a kind of a lever here. Um, which is how the this part of the tailpiece hooks to that. This is, of course, all ebony. There are the thumb wheels. It's really quite convenient to have thumb wheels, I gotta say, even if they are metal. Um, and it's, uh, all in all, it's a really, it's almost as great a guitar as Tom is as a person. He's a dear friend of mine. Oh, yes. I almost forgot the funniest part of this guitar, which is there is a sound port, 
Not all of these guitars have them. In fact, I think very few of the guitars actually have sound ports on them. Is that correct? Four of them. Thank you. And uh, this is one much smaller sound port than, for example, John Monteleone's three sound ports. But, um, and apparently Scott Chinnery had asked, um, gee, I wish I could hear the guitar or it's any of these guitars a little bit more. It's a pet peeve of mine, said Skit Chinnery, that he couldn't, you know, when he was playing, he just wanted to hear him louder. So in a lighthearted way, Tom Rebecki took a chunk of ebony and hand carved this fairly amazing looking, I wish you could see the detail on it, but there's no way that it would be anything other than hand carved, and I frankly have no idea how one does this. But he hand carved an ear trumpet <laughs> which is inspired by the RCA Victor, um, you know, the dog with its ear to the horn of the, of the Victrola. And at any rate, you put it in here, and then when you put it in here, you notice, well, it doesn't really fit perfectly, but it's the thought that counts, right? Uh, it's really one of the funnier aspects of uh, this guitar and of the whole collection. It's a funny story. Thank mm -hmm. you.